Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brendan Bias from FutureCheck.com and welcome to another Walkthrough Wednesday. In this week's tutorial, we are going to be creating this 15 Designs logo. And this is a logo that is based off of a design concept on some random website that I came across on the interwebs. And if you guys are interested in checking out that original design, I would be more than happy to provide a link for it. So check out the description and you can uh, check out this beautiful piece of work. So let's just really quickly go over what it is we are creating here. We have a very simple background. It's this off-white color to a white gradient in the middle. And then obviously the logo itself are these interweaving like green, uh, sh I, don't, I don't even know, they're just green rectangles with some like shadows applied to them. And of course on top of that we have the letters 15, or sorry, the numbers 15 and the word designs. And they kind of look like they're embedded onto those, uh, those interweaving rectangles. And we also have a stock image applied on one of these just as a sort of a splash of color. And overall, this logo is extremely simple to look at. However, there is quite a bit of work that goes into making this happen. So I'm going to try my best to explain this step by step, uh, you know, in a way that everyone can follow along. But if you fall behind, you know, just feel free to ask any questions in the comment section below. So what do you say we get going with this and let's make our new document. So I'm going to stick with the regular 1920 by 1080 with a 72 pixels per inch resolution. Of course, making sure we're on the RGB color mode and a white background is optional. And then you, if you want, you can name this 15 designs and click OK. So before we get going, I have two colors set for my foreground and background color just so that way they're kind of uh, saved and handy to have. The first color I have is the off-white color we are going to use for our background, which is E-B-E-B-E-B, -E -B -E -B, nice and simple. And then I have the green color saved for the color of our rectangles, which is 00894C. So once you have those colors down for your foreground and background color, we can get going. The first thing I'm going to do is double click the background layer and rename it as BG and click OK. And then I'm going to fill this in with that uh, off-white color by hitting Alt Backspace or Option Delete if you happen to be on a Mac. And let's go to our effects and apply a gradient overlay. For this, we are going to set the style to radial. Let's toggle the reverse, set the angle to 60 degrees. And this should be the overall gradient that we're getting here. And we're going to choose a blend mode of screen. And we'll click OK. So some of you guys out there might be perfectionists and some of you might not. If you look in close on this, you'll notice that we have a little bit of banding going on. So you can see the edges of the different shades of white as they go out. And if you want to keep that as it is, you know, that's perfectly fine. But if you're a perfectionist like me, some of you might want to smooth that out. So here's how we can do that. Let's right click the gradient overlay and choose create layer. And then let's select the BG gradient fill and then go to filter, go to noise and add a little bit of noise. And for this, I just keep an amount of 1% or 2% up to you with the distribution set to Gaussian and monochromatic enabled. And if you click OK, you should see like a little bit of a before and after. It smooths it out quite a bit. So now what we can do is merge this down into the BG layer by hitting Control or Command E on our keyboard. And so there we go. We have our flattened background. So what do you say we start making some rectangles, huh? Let's swap our foreground and background colors so that way we have green as our foreground. And let's go to the left hand side and select our rectangle tool. So there are two ways for you to make this rectangle. Option A is to simply click and drag a rectangle and hope that it looks, you know, like a like a proper size. So something that I try to aim for is a height of 150 pixels. So something along those lines. However, if you would like to, uh, something that you can do in Photoshop CS6 and CC, if I remember right, is to simply click somewhere in the documents to create a rectangle shape. So for this, if you decide to go that route, set the width to 1920 and the height to 150, and you can toggle that from the center and click OK. Now, just for my sanity, I want to make sure that this rectangle is centered on the document, so I'm going to select the canvas by hitting Control or Command A on our keyboard and then go to the left hand side and choose the move tool and then select the fifth icon to center it vertically. 
or sorry, to align to the horizontal center, my bad. And then of course we need to go to select and choose deselect to get rid of our selection. So I'm going to place this rectangle somewhere in the upper portion of the document. It's not entirely perfect where it needs to go. And we are going to rename this as 1. And with the one layer selected, let's go to Effects and apply a gradient overlay. And for this, let's simply change the angle to 180 and set the blend mode to multiply. And then we can change the opacity to something like 15%. And that will give us a nice shade, uh, a darker shade of green on the right hand side and our original shade of green on the left hand side. And we can click OK. Now, once again, we get this banding issue. So if you guys want to, you can right click the gradient overlay, choose create layer, select the fill, and then reapply that noise. And then of course you would go in and merge these together and rename this as layer one. Okay, so from now on, I'm going to be using a handful of shortcuts and commands to basically repeat the same tedious things over and over again. So I'm only going to be saying these shortcuts or commands maybe once or twice. And I'm, so I'm leaving it up to you guys to kind of go back and make sure you know the commands as we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate layer one by hitting control or command J on our keyboard. And I'm going to transform that by hitting control or command T. So let's just bring this down while holding the shift key so it doesn't wander to the left or right. And I'm going to right click and flip this horizontally so that way we kind of differentiate it from the original layer. And let's just kind of bring this down till it meets up with the edge of the original one. And let's go ahead and click and drag one of these corners up while holding control and shift. And so that way we should be able to, uh, you know, just kind of give it a little bit of perspective to it. And let's also bring in the bottom right hand corner just a little bit. And let's also click and drag the middle down to kind of size it up just a little bit. And maybe we'll actually bring down this corner just a touch. Give it a little bit more of that perspective feeling to it. All right, so now that that looks good, let's hit the check mark up top to commit the transformation. And let's rename this as layer two. Next up, let's go back to layer one, duplicate that, and this will be our layer three. Let's transform it and bring this down. And once again, let's kind of scale it up just a little bit. But this time, let's bring the bottom left hand corner up a little bit and the bottom right hand corner down just a little bit. And maybe we'll size this up just a little bit more. All right, let's go back to layer one, duplicate that, rename it as four, and let's transform it and bring it down. And let's go ahead and flip this around horizontally. And this time, let's only scale it up just a little bit. And let's bring down the bottom left hand corner. Let's actually scale that back down just a touch. So just kind of mess with that until you get an effect that looks, uh, you know, nice and proportional to you. And then let's commit the transformation, go back to layer one, duplicate and transform, bring it on down. And this time let's bring in the bottom right hand corner just a touch. And I'll actually scale this one up a little bit more. And let's just kind of do it something like that. Actually, hold on a second. Let's go back the other way this time. Let's bring it down this way. Of course, not quite so much perspective. Something around there looks like a fine and dandy plan to me. Let's hit the check mark to commit that, rename this as layer five, go back to layer one, duplicate it, rename it as layer six, and let's transform it and bring it down, flip it around so that way it doesn't uh, kind of, it doesn't mix up with the original. And this time around, we're just going to put it so there's just a little bit of a gap between the uh, between layer six and layer five here. And then we'll go to the left hand side and we'll bring this corner down quite a bit. So somewhere around there should be pretty good. I'll actually kind of bring down this side a little bit more. And we'll get something like this. All right. So let's go ahead and hit the check mark once again to commit the transformation. And now we should have a total of six different layers with it going from one, six, five, four, three, and two. So let's select all of these layers and group them together by hitting control or command G. And you can rename this as your shapes. So with the shapes group selected, let's transform that by hitting control or command T and let's click and drag this 
uh, to rotate it to about minus 30 degrees. And from here on, we'll just kind of scale it however we deem fit. And let's just kind of kind of mess with this and see what looks kind of good. I might stretch it out just a little bit more and scale it down. So somewhere around here is looking pretty decent. Uh, might trim it up just a little bit. So this is just kind of a, a guesstimate. There's no real science to this. Just kind of mess with it until you find something that looks pretty good to you. And let's kind of position this in a good spot and hit the check mark to commit the transformation here. And now we want to give it that really neat shape that we saw in the demonstration. So to do that, let's go to the left-hand side and choose our polygonal lasso tool. And for this, let's start off by going to the bottom corner and we'll click just inside the corner like so. Let's go up to the top left-hand corner, so right around here. And then let's go up and to the right. And this time around, let's kind of come in just a little bit to make an angle. So somewhere around here should be good. And then let's go to the third rectangle. So we have one, then two, then three. And we will go to the very edge of the third rectangle where it meets with the fourth one. So let's click and we'll go down and to the left just a little ways and let's click again. And then let's just go down and create a little bit of an angle somewhere around right there. And then we'll simply go back and actually hold on a second, my bad. Let's let's go back and make sure we're still within the inner portion here. I almost forgot to do that. And then we'll just go back in and meet with the original point. So this is the overall shape that we should get. You can kind of mess with that as you please. It's completely up to you. And with that selection, we can go and add in a layer mask and we should get our shape. All right, now that we have the overall shape down, let's go ahead and create a couple of shadows to kind of help these things pop a little bit. So I'm gonna go back to my move tool just for the sake of having an arrow here. And let's open up our shapes. So let's select layer two to start off with and go to effects and apply a drop shadow. And for this drop shadow, let's set the distance to zero and let's set the size to about, let's say 15. So just kind of mess with that as you like and let's add a 1% bit of noise and click okay. And we are going to apply the same exact drop shadow to layers three, four, five, and six. Or sorry, scratch that, not six, just three, four, and five. And the easiest way to do that is to hold down the Alt key if you're on a PC, that would be the Option key for on a Mac, and click and drag the effects icon from layer two to the next layer, and that will create a duplicate of it. So we can just do the same thing from three to four and four to five. And we can open, uh, let's go ahead and make sure these are all open here. And the next thing we need to do is separate these drop shadows into new layers. So to do that, we will right click a drop shadow and choose create layer. And it's going to ask you, uh, or it's going to say that some aspects of the effect cannot be reproduced with layers, whatever, that's okay. So now just go ahead and do the same thing for layer four, create the layer, hit okay. Do the same thing for layer three and the same thing for layer two. So from here on out, we are going to be manipulating these drop shadows to make them a little bit more interesting. So with two's drop shadow selected, let's go ahead and bring up the transform tool. And for this, what I'd like to do is kind of give this a little bit of rotation and maybe move it up a few pixels. And if you want to, you can also bring in one of these corners while holding the control key to make the shadow just a little bit more shallow, but maybe we won't do it quite as much. So we're getting something that looks something like that and we can hit the check mark and maybe drop down the opacity, make it a little bit more, a little bit more opaque there. And that's looking nice and dandy. Let's move on to the third drop shadow. This time let's rotate it this direction. So minus two degrees looks pretty good. Maybe I'll move this out a little bit. So just kind of a experiment with that as you please. That's looking pretty good. So let's check mark that, bring down the fill and let's do somewhere around there. Next drop shadow, let's do the other direction. Let's make this one a little bit more intense. So something like that should be kind of fun. Let's drop the fill or the opacity. Let's make that one rather intense. And then last but not least, five drop shadow. We'll, we'll make this one really intense. And let's 
move it somewhere around right there. And then once again, we can drop down the fill on that. Once again, just kind of mess with that as you please. So from here on, you can just kind of go back for, uh, go back and forth and mess with things. Like I kind of want to go back to the second drop shadow and maybe I'll kind of scale it up a little bit to bring out the shadow a little bit. And let's actually move that over a touch. So that just kind of made the shadow a little bit more prominent. You can do whatever the heck you want. It's really up to you. It's very, very experimental. All right, so now that we've got our drop shadows in place, I think we're ready to add in our uh, our image on the centerpiece right here, as well as adding in our text. Now, the image that you use is uh, completely optional, but the, I'm just using a sample picture from Windows 7. Uh, it's called Chrysanthemum, or Chrys Chrysanthemum. Wow, that's a that's a weird named flower there. Anyway, let's just click and drag this into our document, and let's scale it up a whole lot. Uh, something around there should be <laughs> just fine. And I'm just going to move this up and to the left over here. Uh, something like that should be fine. And I can hit the check mark to commit that. And for this chrysanthemum layer, we let's click and drag this until it's right above layer 3. And I want to create a clipping mask out of layer 3. So I'm going to move my mouse between layer 3 and chrysanthemum. chrysanthemum wow. You know, I'm just going to call this flower. Screw it. <laughs> Okay, so hover your mouse between layer 3 and flower, and hold down the Alt key and click between those to create a clipping mask. Alright, so now this should only be applied to layer 3. Looks, looking pretty good. However, I do want to make this image a little bit more yellow. So to do that, let's right click the flower layer, and let's choose a rasterized layer. Okie dokie. So now that we've rasterized the flower, let's go to image. Go to Adjustments and choose Hue and Saturation, or you can hit Control or Command U on your keyboard. And for this, let's simply change the hue to plus 14, and that should kind of brighten up the oranges to a nice yellow. And we can hit OK. All right, next up, I think we're ready to add in our text. So let's select Layer 2, go to our text tool by hitting Letter T, and click somewhere in the middle to start uh, typing out our text. But before we type out our text, let's go to the color and change this to white. And the font that I'm using is called Typograph Pro, which is a font available from uh, one of Video Copilot's DVDs. So just kind of pick out a font that looks good to you. Uh, so I'm using Typograph Pro with semi-bold for the uh, the font style. And let's just type out the letter or the numbers 15. And let's just kind of scale these up like so. Now, for those of you that don't know how to uh, bring up the transform box while you're typing out text, simply hold down the control key or the command key on your keyboard, and then you can click and drag one of these corners while holding Alt and Shift, and you can just kind of mess with that as you please. And let's actually scale this back down and kind of move it off to the side. Uh, I kind of want to bring this in a little bit more. Okie dokie. So, place that in a spot that looks pretty good to you. Uh, now that I think about it, I kind of want to bring the numbers 1 and 5 together. So let's select them both. And let's bring up our character options off to the right hand side. And if you don't have that, you can go to Window and choose Character. And let's set the VA tracking to minus 100. There we go. That looks way better. Now we can scale this back up and fill it up a little bit more. That's much, much better. All right. So I'm going to just throw this into a spot that looks nice and decent and hit the check mark up top. And we want this to be a, a clipped to every single uh, rectangle that we see here. So what we're going to do is we're going to clip uh, layer 15 to layer 2 once again by clicking between them while holding the Alt key or the Option key. And now we need to duplicate layer 15 for each every other layer. And the easiest way I've found to do this is by holding down the Alt key or the Option key for on a Mac and simply click and drag layer 15 down to whatever, uh, wherever you need it to go. In this case, I'm going to click and drag this above the flower layer and once again turn that into a clipping mask and then continue down the line. So let's duplicate this above layer 4. Let's clip that. Bring it down to layer 5. Clip that. Bring it down to layer 6. And we can actually leave that there because layer 1 and layer 6 
are essentially the bottom most layer. So we can kind of leave that there. All right, so what do you say we add in our next little bit of text? So let's select the topmost layer. In this case, that's layer 15. And let's, uh, actually, let me give you guys a quick tip. Right now, if I were to try and click somewhere on the document, it's automatically going to try and edit the existing text. So how do I add in more text without having to create a new layer? Well, this is actually really easy. Simply hold down the shift key and then click. And that will let you guys create a new layer without, you know, editing one of the previous sets of text. So just a, a quick little tip for you guys if you didn't know that already. I'm going to change the, uh, the, the font style to light rather than semi-bold. And let's type out designs. And once again, we will kind of uh, scale this down to fit and drag this into an appropriate spot. Just scale it down a little bit more in my opinion. That looks like a good spot to me and I can commit that transformation there. And this time around, I only need to put this above layer three, uh, above layer four, and above layer five. Oop, move it on down, there we go. All right, we are looking fantastic. We have one more thing that we need to do and that is a drop shadow for the overall logo. So let's select the shapes group and apply a drop shadow to it. For this, let's turn off the global light and let's set the opacity to 25% with an angle of 80 degrees. We'll set the distance to about 10 and a size of about 20. And of course, like always, you can always mess, uh, mess with that as you please and maybe add in just a little bit of noise so it blends with the background. And we'll hit OK. And let's take a look at what it is we created. All right, so I think this looks fantastic. I mean, of course, it's not perfect, and it, you know, it hardly ever will be. It always turns out different every time you make something like this. But you know what, guys? I hope you're able to come away with uh, a few more talents and a few more ideas for your own designs. And if you appreciated this tutorial and thought it was well laid out, please give this video a thumbs up, a like, or a comment, any combination of the three, and I will love you forever. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, guys, that's really all I have for you, and I will see you next week. Peace out.